Hey everybody, and welcome to Q&A Wednesday, where I answer the questions that are commonplace in the health and fitness industry. Um, actually, I actually care way more about you, your health, and honestly, your head right now, considering, uh, I don't know, where we are, we just finally got to phase 1.5. Like, I don't even understand what that means. I'm hoping that means I can get a ped pedicure at this point, because wow. Just wow. So today we are talking about how to choose a good health goal, which honestly right now is probably a great thing considering hopefully your gym is looking to open back up, even though ours are not quite there. Um, but you know, it's, it's, I know I talk about this all the time, but I really think that it's necessary. You guys, this is about health um, more than I want to be lean and I want to be a supermodel or I want to be a fitness model or you guys are a dime a dozen. Get over it. You know, this is about you being super healthy, but I also want to talk really quickly. Sorry, I'm going to drop this. I feel like I'm super short. Um, I really want to talk about what's appropriate. Um, you know, I think people that don't know me think I automatically, it's, I think it's funny. Most people are like, well, you know, I really don't want to be a competitor. So if you don't really want to work with me, competitors are not my primary client. I love to work with people who are just trying to figure it out and how to have a healthy lifestyle. So if that's something that has put you off, that is because I've been at the other end of the health spectrum, um, I actually prefer to work with people who just honestly just don't know. They don't know how to be healthy because the information out there is so confusing. It's, um, it's conflicting information. You hear one thing one day and you hear something else the next day and it just doesn't make any sense. So that's what we want to talk about. And I know I'm talking really fast today. I'm actually back to my usual insane, crazy, can't seem to hold still self. Um, just because I've got a lot going on. So um, I know I'm gonna talk really fast and I'll try to keep myself slow down. Um, but this is this is a topic that I really hold dear to my heart. I know that sometimes you just need something specific to work on. My frustration is everybody thinks that, you know, after three months of being quarantined and putting on 15 to 20 pounds, that we should be able to take that right off, right? Um, the problem is, is that it's not so simple because of course, if you've been using food as a coping mechanism, which unfortunately is pretty common, um, you're gonna to have to work with some things and it's not just uh, getting back to the gym. So let's talk about, um, there, there's things that I think that you need to ask yourself no matter what style of health goal that you're working towards um, because a lot of people I don't think understand what's going to be involved. And I, I think that most people underestimate how much work it's going to take and how much, like they, they underestimate how much time it's gonna take. Does that make sense? Let me see if I can rephrase that. You know, most people think it's gonna be super fast and they're not gonna to have to do much to get back to where they are. And I'm like, oh, okay, honey, uh, that is not how it works. So there's a few questions I think that you should ask yourself as you try to set this up. Because honestly, maybe being a fitness model down the road, it will be great, but right now it's about, okay, what can you handle? Um, and like I said, considering we're all going through some crazy stuff right now, it might just be that you need to be get, get back to the, the don't say new normal. I don't even want to hear that word again, that term. Like, it makes me want to punch people in the face. I don't like, don't talk about new normal unless you're going to talk about being a better American because I have absolutely had it with what's going on. Um, oof, you guys, you better educate yourself before this election. Uh, there is some weird, crazy stuff going on. All right, enough about that. So one of the, let me give you a list of questions. You can, I'm gonna post this when it's done so you can always go back and listen to it again, write things down. But I think it's really important that you ask yourself these questions because otherwise you're just setting yourself up for, for failure. Number one, how likely am I to see myself through it? Which means, are you dedicated? Because here's the deal. It requires the ability to keep going even once that excitement has left you. You know how you start out that goal and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on stage. I'm gonna wear my bikini, blah, 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 whatever. Like I don't even care what it is, but you start out really excited because you like the thought of what you're gonna feel like and how it's gonna feel to get there. But then when you realize that you have to grind to get there and you have to be consistent and it's, you know, it's the stuff that people don't see. The fact that, you know, I get up every morning at 5 a.m. and I do 30 minutes of cardio. You don't see that part of it. You don't realize how difficult it is. So are you willing to do the work? Because that is a big part of it. And there's more to that. Um, are you going to be able to handle the intensity? You know, like I said, I think people underestimate how long it's going to take to get there because they think, well, if I'm perfect, right, let's do the math. If I... If I just have a 500 calorie deficit every day, I'm gonna lose a pound a week. Well, if I double that, that's okay, a thousand calorie deficit a day, then I'm going to lose, you know, seven pounds, you know, this two pounds a week. So that means that in order to lose 20 pounds, like it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Number one, 
trust me, you're not gonna stay that disciplined because if you're not used to it and if you struggled before, there's more to it than that. You guys, the physical part is the easy part. It's this that gets difficult. Um, you know, I've told people more than once that you don't lose the weight uh, to fix your head. It's opposite. You have to fix your head to lose the weight because whatever mentally and emotionally got you to where you are and the reason why you're unhappy there, until you fix that part, you're not going to get to go you're not going to change, right? Because if you get home because you're stressed out every day because you're scared or because your boss is making you wear a mask, which I, don't know, I have one, it says right on it how unhappy I am to wear it. Get over it. Um, but if, um, if you're stressed out and you get home every day and you drink a glass of wine and you eat the box of cookies, right? That's a coping skill. That's a coping mechanism. It's Food can be a drug, it, it really can. That sugar lights up the same part of your brain as cocaine because you like that dopamine release. That's why we have comfort food. So again, I think people un, don't understand or they just don't think about how intense it's going to have to be or what they're gonna have to solve in order to get there. So if it's too intense for you, and maybe it's a timing issue, maybe you know, in order to get where you think you wanna go, no, it's not gonna take 20 minutes of exercise a day. It's gonna take an hour or an hour and a half. Or, you know, if you're getting, when I get on stage, which by the way, I really am truly done. <laughs> when I get on stage, by the time I'm a few weeks out, I'm doing an hour plus of cardio every day, actually closer to an hour and a half. I'm doing a 35 to 40 minute lift every day. That's a lot of time. So you got, you have to decide, okay, if I'm gonna do it in this amount of time, I'm gonna have to kick it in. Am I ready to be that intense? Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to be okay with it taking this amount of time. I honestly prefer that because whatever you do to get there, you have to keep doing to stay there. So it has to be sustainable. I can do anything temporarily, right? Corey says she's putting the blinders on. <laughs> you're just gonna jump in and do it anyway. <laughs> um, Okay, now I can't remember what I was to talk about, but that's okay, that's okay, back to it. All right, do I have the time? So like I said, by the time I get ready to get on stage, I'm devoting two and a half-ish hours a day, not to mention I have zero energy, um, to exercise and doing the things I need to do, not including food prep and the fact that I can barely move because I'm exhausted and I'm not eating enough to maintain what I normally do. Do I have the time for that? If you have a job that requires that you work 10 to 12 hours a day, you might not be able to keep up with what it is that you intend to do. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, will you be committed? It's hard, you guys. Like I said, as soon as, you, as soon as that feeling leaves you, it's like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? What's gonna keep me motivated? You have to figure that out. Even a coach cannot do that for you because I'm not you. <laughs> I don't know what motivates you. I can support you. I can cheerlead for you. I can be your biggest fan, but I cannot do the work for you and I can't, I mean, I can even call you every morning and be like, rise and shine, this is gonna be great. Uh, Corey says you can do anything temporarily. Yes, that would be correct because that's how I get on stage in 16 weeks. <laughs> I can do that for 16 weeks, I can't keep up with that. That's why that is just not a lifestyle. Um, and I want you to live a healthy lifestyle because again, it has to be sustainable because if you get there and then go back to your old habits, you're gonna go back to the way you are now. That is just how this rolls. Um, so, and do you know what it really takes? right? Because what I find is most people have completely unrealistic expectations of the amount of time it's going to take and the work that it's going to require. So yeah, I find that super fascinating. And, and most, you might not need to talk to a professional. That is part of a coach's job is to tell you, and it's hard for me. I can't just come out and say, well, that goal is going to take you 10 weeks. I don't know you well enough to do that, but they can help describe this is the effort it's going to take to get there. And then you can determine whether or not that is doable for you. All right. Um, does it support and work with your current lifestyle? That's a big one. Um, you know, when I'm competing, and I'm just using that as an example because it's rough, it's hard to be a good coach. It's hard to be a good trainer because I don't have the energy that I normally have bouncing off the walls to show up and have an active job. It's tough to do. So it was whatever your plan is, if, if you have to work out an hour and a half a day, does your job, family, spouse, are they gonna start to feel like you're not spending time with them? So again, there's a balance there, there's a trade-off. You know, part of working on yourself is making sure, and it's important, right? If you take care of you, then you can take care of everybody else, but you have to keep in mind, that's why we say that bodybuilding itself is a, is a selfish sport because it requires a lot of time focusing on ourselves. I mean, that's just how it rolls. So there's a time and a place for all of that. That's why I'm not doing it right now or anymore. I want to be able to do all the things I have going on and it requires that I have some energy. 
Um, so for example, you know, if it's something that you like, I, I want to look fantastic because I'm going to Mexico in September, um, here's the deal. Is that going to ruin the fact that you like to go boating every weekend and drink with your buddies? because that's probably not gonna support where you're trying to go. Um, or maybe, like I said, I have, an, I have an active job. Sometimes that makes it really difficult to do both. Um, you know, maybe, maybe your job really is physical. Maybe you're in construction. Maybe you, you work an actual physical job. It's gonna be really tough if you're really cutting your calories to keep up with yourself. By the way, that's not a, a great idea anyway because then you just drop your metabolism. All right, um, so then the question you have to ask is, am I looking for temporary results? Like, a, like Corey and I have both said, you can do anything temporarily. It's, can you do it for the long term? Because if you want to keep those results, you have to keep doing the work. As a matter of fact, it actually gets harder because your body starts to get good at it. It's kind of like when people come to me and they're doing a whole lot of cardio and no strength training. I'm like, why are you doing an hour of cardio? Well, I'm just not getting any results anymore. Well, yeah, your body got real good at it, right? It's not burning as many calories. Your body adapts very, very quickly and very efficiently. Your body is an amazing thing. The biology is incredible. It just it gets good at it as quickly as it can. So hence the reason that at the beginning of a goal, you might only be doing a couple of days of cardio. Then as you get closer to your goal, you might increase how much cardio that you're doing. So again, you've got you to gotta balance all that out. There's much, it's so much more than just thinking, well, I'm just going to go on that diet that I saw online. Yeah, all right, you're not the same body type. You've had a couple of kids. That is not gonna work for you, just saying. All right, number four, um, you're going to have to address some emotions and some habits, and are you prepared for that? Because that's probably the most difficult part. Again, there's reasons, you know, if you've ever had, for those of you that like to drink a glass of wine every night, you walk in from work, you're exhausted, you just need a break, you need to relax, you drop the keys on, in, on the little hook that's right in your inside door, and the first thing that you do is pop open a bottle of wine. You gotta be able to stop doing that. And I'm gonna tell you, it's one of the hardest things to do. You're gonna have to change your routine in order to make that work. You have to replace not so great habits that aren't supporting what you're gonna do with better habits that contribute to what you're trying to accomplish. It is harder than you think. Um, and I recommend you only change one or two habits at a time. If you try to completely change your lifestyle, the first time you get overwhelmed or frustrated or a huge obstacle comes your way, you're gonna throw your hands in the air and go, I cannot do this. So keep that in mind that that is one of the hardest parts of this. So will you be able to work through that? Number five, am I willing to do the work? Okay. I repeat myself multiple times, but for some odd reason, everybody thinks there's some magic pill out there, you know, drink this to melt body fat. It's stupid. Like there, oh, there's my dog. Um, you cannot cheat biology. You, you can't. There is nothing that says if you take this pill, it's going to work. It could help, but are you destroying your body meanwhile? Like, are you taking something that actually is down the road, now it's you, you've done something to your heart or you've completely ruined your metabolism? Or you cannot, you can't cheat it. You can't, you have to do the work. It's okay to start out slow. As a matter of fact, one of the things I tell people, I prefer that whatever your goal is, that you reach it slowly. And I know that that's counterproductive because we're Americans, actually we're human, we want it yesterday before we even thought about putting in the work, right? I heard from Amazon, how come it wasn't there before I decided you know, to get on there and order it? It's actually best if you take your time because again, it, you have, first of all, if you try to do it fast, your body's gonna fight you. Your body has mechanisms so that if you drop your calories too low, it wants you to survive. So when you start craving things or you start, all you can do is think about food, there's biology behind it. Your body is trying to preserve and, and keep survive. It's a survival mechanism. So I prefer you do it slow so that you're, you're kind of tricking your body into, okay, well, I'm not like, I'm not starving, I'm just eating less food, so take some body fat and burn it for fuel, right? The other thing is that, ladies, remember that, you know, our skin doesn't bounce back quite as fast as it used to as we get older. If you are going from, so just case in point, my heaviest was 210 pounds. At some point, I had to have a mini tummy tuck because I had excess skin and there's nothing I could do to make it go away. Five babies, a lot of extra weight around my midsection. Um, it just, it doesn't necessarily bounce back as fast as you would like it to. So it takes time for your body to bounce back. So obviously we want it to do as far as it can all by itself. 
if you do it too fast, you've seen those biggest loser um, winners or those competitors, which I don't like that show anyway, uh, do not like how they ran it, but they had excess fat and they all had to have surgery. Unfortunately, most of them gained it back. Plus, um, and again, because they did not have the coping skills to deal with it or the ability to do those things once they got home. But you notice that they had a lot of excess skin. So changing habits, being able to mentally and emotionally deal with everything that's going on, that excess skin, it just takes time. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. I'm so sick of hearing, I'm just gonna diet for three months because that's my New Year's resolution. That's why I throw things at the TV in January because I find it so dumb. Like I'm just over it, I'm tired of hearing about it. Okay, so tips, let's be positive. Tips, things that can help you. Number one, focus more on your overall health. Um, you know, I find it funny when people are like, well, I just need to lose weight to get healthy. No, you need to get healthy to lose weight. Um, body fat is your body's survival mechanism. It's part of it. So it holds on to it. You have to get healthy. Um, one of the th interesting things about body fat is people that don't have body fat, um, it's actually unhealthy. When you've heard of that person that was super skinny, ate whatever they want, and then they dry, drop dead of a heart attack, they don't have the ability, all of those, those toxins that are entering their body, they have no body fat to shove it in. So they're unfortunately, they don't have that survival mechanism to their body. So we all thought it was like, they could eat whatever they want, and they didn't gain anything. Yeah, so where did their body store toxins? It didn't, it just affected their cells and then they dropped dead of a heart attack. So keep that in mind. Um, Lynn says, this quarantine has found this 61 year old postmenopausal sky, yes. Yeah, girl, those are, that's not a good, uh, not a good mix. So um, my suggestion, you know, and if you need to, you know, there is nothing wrong with getting professional help, especially when it comes to mental and emotional health, getting some therapy. I've used therapists before. I just don't see a downside. Sometimes it's just about learning new coping mechanisms because A, nobody teaches it in school, um, which I, yeah, the educational system is really messed up. Um, it's okay to get professional help, especially if they can help guide you and, and, and get you to a place where you can drop those cortisol levels because your stress level comes down. Um, I also highly recommend that you get your hormone levels checked uh, and look into bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. As a matter of fact, I have an interview coming up with a local expert um, in the next two weeks and I will be posting that on here because I find it so important. Um, I'm on all bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when the time comes. Um, but you really do need to focus more on your overall health. Um, I want to feel good. I want to have energy. Um, I want to be able to keep up and continue to do what I'm doing, even at 45. So that is my focus. Um, number two, you guys have to involve some self-care. I find it really fascinating. And, and this is coming from someone who's a mom of five, who for a lot of years just didn't feel like I was good enough, didn't feel like I could keep up. I still don't feel like I can keep up, but that's a whole other ball game. Uh, we tend to not put ourselves first. So the problem is when you aren't taking care of yourself, it makes it very difficult to take care of other people. Lynn says she is taking bioidentical progesterone. Fantastic, I take all of it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think doing several years of competing uh, destroyed uh, my hormones. Uh, there, there's probably some genetics involved in there too. Um, and I did a lot of research before I delved into it uh, because my grandmother did have uh, breast cancer brought on by um, estrogen therapy, but it was the synthetic. Uh, I got some really interesting, good books on that if you're interested. Um, message me or, or drop a, a comment below and I'll, I'll post that so you can see what those books, there's some really good books out there. I, I do a lot of reading, you guys. I'm really devastated that my library is still closed because um, now I have to pay for books, which is fine. I just, sometimes it's, I usually have five or six books going at a time. Right now I'm reading one at a time because I don't want to buy five or six. Um, so the hormone replacement, great idea. I think there's some huge benefits there, but make sure you're taking care of you. And if that means, I'm an introvert. So that for me means sometimes I have to come home and lock myself in my room because I need a moment without people. Um, I love people. I'm an outgoing introvert. But when I've been around people all day, I need that moment to get my energy back. I need to just be by myself. So, and I know that, and I'm actually really okay with who I am. So, um, the other thing, the last thing I want to tell you, yes, Lynn, I will, um, I'll put a couple books. There's a really, really good one on uh, women's testosterone levels that I think you, you should read. That's where I started. So um, the last thing I wanna talk about is really focusing on your efforts versus the results for a couple of reasons. Number one, like I said, we're all completely unrealistic as to what it's gonna take to get there. Um, 
not a bad idea to at least consult a professional and be like, you know, if I want to do this, what do you think it's going to take? Um, you know, we can usually give you a guideline. I'm not gonna be able to say, well, it's only going to take you this because again, it takes me a minute to learn people and how their bodies work and how their habits are and, and how their personalities can handle things. So <laughs> keep that in mind. But if you focus on like, I know in order to, for me, I know in order to lean out, I have to drop my carbs to a certain amount. I can't drop them out. I can't do keto because my body is not happy. Um, I have to do some cardio because I tend to store fat in my legs. And for those of us that tend to store that subcutaneous fat, we need cardio. So again, I know what it takes to get there. Then I can start penciling things out because I've done it multiple times. But if you're unsure, then you kind of need to and, and it, just start. It, it don't necessarily have to delve in and be like, I need a plan, especially if that's not how you roll. Um, I do <laughs> I tend to be very, very plan and schedule oriented, but you know, maybe you just start cutting out the sugar and drinking more water. Those are two really great things that you can work on and they're not overwhelming. The sugar is going to be a hard part because you're going to have withdrawals. <laughs> it's rough, but it gives you something to work on. If you know where you want to go and you have something that can help lay out that plan or that map for you, that roadmap, then you can start focusing on, okay, well, my coach says that if I do, you know, if I strength train three days a week and I do this much cardio and I really focus on eating more healthy fats and less processed food, you're at least going the right direction. So focus on what it takes because you can't always control the results. Like I said, you might not want to know what it takes to get there and you don't know what your body's limits are. You, there might be some variables you have no idea, including hormones. That's a big one, right? Um, so Lynn says she dropped sugar and coffee in May. Best thing ever. Yeah. Especially if you are high cortisol because that, the extra, um, stimulant in the coffee really actually can contribute to that. So have to be really careful there. But, um, you guys, I get my best ideas from you. So if you have questions you want me to talk about, or if you have a recipe you want me, I am going to do <laughs> meals with Melissa this weekend. Last weekend was the 4th of July weekend and we ended up going camping. So I apologize that there wasn't one there, but you guys can actually go back through either my feed or you can go to my YouTube. YouTube channel I we upload everything that we do um, I need to get in there and re um, label everything at some point but you can go back through and watch everything I've ever done on Facebook because we upload it to my channel there so you guys thanks for listening and like I said if you have a question ask because we'll talk about it next week have an incredible week you guys happy summer hang in there and stay healthy have a good night